every institution of hell that is molesting destinies of the innocent. I command their end by divine judgment in the name of Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. I decree that for you in the name of Jesus. Every area of pity around anyone's life under the sound of my voice is converted to testimonies of envy. Catching the vision of God's plan for our lives. And this is part four of it. Catching the vision of God for your life. Catching the vision of God's plan for your life. And this is part four. Um, while I was in Canada, I was working with a telecommunications company. And that telecommunications company is just like what you call it and t here. In that company, there is the cell cellular part of it. There is the home phone, cable internet, and all of that. And now, there are perks and privileges for working for that organization. And one of the perks and privileges was that whatsoever service I had with them, there was a 50% discount as an employee of that company. There is a 50% discount in everything. Now that is for simply being an employee of that organization. The day you switched kingdoms from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, there are perks and privileges in the kingdom of light. Now any employee that worked with us at that time that did not know, and don't be surprised that some of them did not know, that there is a 50% discount if you work for this organization. That, that you are not taking advantage of it does not mean it is not there. Now, if you now refuse to take advantage of it, why? Probably because you did not know. It is not, it has nothing to do with that organization. You were the one that didn't take advantage of it, although it was there. Are you with me this morning? Now, the day you switched kingdoms by redemption, you became a child of destiny. And as a child of destiny, unlike a company that employs you, a company that employs you, you are an employee there. You are not a shareholder. Are you with me? You are an employee. However, at redemption, God makes you a son or a daughter. And that means you are a co-partaker. You are like you own things. Everything that he has, now you own. Is somebody with me this morning? Everything that your father has in the kingdom, you now own it. Why? Because you are not employed, you are born. And as a son and a daughter, whatsoever your father has, automatically you are a partaker of it. Glory to the name of the Lord. At redemption. Now, unlike a company that gives you 50% discount, at redemption, you are not getting discounts. You actually own the company as an adopted son and daughter. That's why Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 speaks and says to us, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. It says, But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, have a father. So, you have been redeemed as an adopted child of the kingdom. And as an adopted child, everything, you have a legal right to everything that your father owns. Glory to the name of the Lord. I said, glory to the name of the Lord. That's why John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 12, speaks to us. It says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become.
the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So when you receive him, you are also receiving power to become his child. And, you know, if you want to, you need power to get some things. That's why he's empowering you for it at redemption. He says, when you became a son, he gave you power to have and to own everything that he owns. Your begging mentality ends here this morning. Your mentality that you have to beg for all things ends here today. As a child of the kingdom, this morning you will be seeing what you are entitled to. And not only what you are entitled to, you know, when you know what your father owns, have you ever seen the son of a Saudi prince or a prince coming in Saudi, wherever that area, all that area? You, do you ever see them walking like destitutes around? No, because they know what their father owns. You will begin to walk in it now. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you are entitled to perks and privileges. You know, we, we always talk about the prodigal son. Um, most of us, uh, the only thing I see wrong with the prodigal son is that he's foolish. He doesn't know how to manage resources. That's the only foolish thing I see about him. But the prodigal son had knowledge. The prodigal son knew what he was entitled to. The prodigal son knew what the father had. As a matter of fact, he went to the father. Everything that I'm entitled to, give it to me now. I need it now. And the father had no choice because he's in the lineage. The son of the kingdom. And so if he demands for his entitlement, the father has no choice but to hand it over to him. The bigger one that should know did not know. Glory to the Lord. I said, glory to the Lord. So because he didn't know, he was filled with envy and bitterness. The bigger one, the smaller one knew, went to town. The only problem he had was management. He didn't know how to manage it. He finished everything. And as I will be showing you later, he also had knowledge of recovery. <laughs> ah, glory to the Lord. He also had knowledge of recovery. If I have spent all these things riotously, there must be a way to get it back. Many of you don't know now because you don't know. You don't have now because you don't know. But after this service, you will know. Amen. And when you know, when the, when the enemy steals something from you, if you don't know you have the thing, you won't know they have stolen it. Are you with me this morning? You have a car. There is no way somebody will steal one car that you won't know. That they have stolen your car. Are you with me? Now, but you have some things that has been stolen. And then they call the police. What? You see, they stole this thing from your apartment. Are you sure? It's my own. I didn't even know I had it. You will not pursue recovery because you didn't know. But when you know, then the enemy will not steal what belongs to you. And if peradventure is able to steal it, you have the power to recover. Many people's health have been stolen. There shall be recovery today. Many people's joy have been stolen. There shall be recovery today. As a matter of fact, many people's homes, families have been stolen. There shall be recovery today. Your career may have been stolen from you. There shall be recovery today. Your children may have been stolen from you. There shall be recovery today. Amen. When your child stops listening to you, that means the enemy has stolen him. You are no more in charge. But there shall be recovery. Amen. In the glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The prodigal son was, the, the broad, elder brother of the prodigal son was angry. He said, 
Father, that lamb that I've been looking at, I've been feeding because I want to have a party with it later. That's the one you killed for this boy that has left many years ago and just came back? Ah, that, that's not fair. I have been here serving you. I don't even have chicken. I have been keeping this ram thinking that one day maybe something will happen. You killed it again for this guy and then the father told him, ha, you don't know. Now let me tell you, everything that I have is yours. Amen. But he didn't know. The younger one knew. That's why he demanded for it. The bigger one did not know. So he was suffering in silence. You see, the difference between you now and your neighbor is because the reason he's going up is because he knows what he's entitled to. You don't know. That's why you are there. So don't be bitter against them. You also ask for your own portion from your father. The Lord will give you understanding. Yeah. Now, very briefly, what are those things that we inherit at, in, at redemption? What are those things that we inherit at redemption? Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12 tells us all of these things that we inherit at redemption. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12, God was speaking. He said, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. He says, worthy is the lamb that was slain. He says, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Glory to the name of the Lord. Now you see now that it's not working. You see it's not working now. Glory to the Lord. He said, saying with a loud voice, he said, he said, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain. He died for you to have all these other things. He says to have what? To Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. That's one. To receive riches. That's two. And wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That's what redemption has given you. So anything that is less than this is not from him. Where you inherited that one from, I have no idea. But this, everything that you see in you that has to do with this, that's what redemption has brought to you. It says power, number one. John 1, 12. It says there, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So at redemption, the first thing you received was power. Oh, uh, glory to the name of the Lord. Is somebody alive this morning? Stop looking powerless. A man that has power does not beg. A man that has power knows what he has. And walks majestically. Are you with me this morning? The lion knows what he carries. So the lion, the Bible says concerning the lion. The, the lion is not timid. The lion knows who he is. And he walks majestically around town. Looking for who to feed on. Glory to the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor you have power. You have inherited it. Walk in it. Number two. Riches. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. It says, for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that through though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Why? That ye through his poverty might be rich. So what are you doing with poverty? At redemption, he handed riches over to you. So it's not as if he's not there. 
Are you tapping into it or are you wasting resources? Remember the prodigal son? He knew the riches were there. He demanded for the riches, but he squandered the riches. There are many people squandering their riches right now on irrelevances. On irrelevances. You are riding a car that is a house. Are you with me? If you understand what I'm saying. You are riding a car that is a house. Instead of pumping that money into buying a house. Who are you impressing? And God hates waste. So when you don't put what he has given to you to proper use, he stops it from coming. Because he does not like waste. We were moving here. I was the first one to come. And then people were telling me, showing me houses. I went to one. He said, this is how much you pay. I said, uh-uh. Anything above this amount, I'm not, I don't want. Anything above this amount, count me out. He said, ah, but that means you will be living in somebody like that. I, I don't mind. Who will see? Who will, who will tell me? Ah, say, Pastor, see where he's living. That, that, that means you don't have work. <laughs> that means you are jobless. You are, don't stop trying to impress anyone. Just live your life to enjoy. Live your life to enjoy it. Stop trying to impress people. You are not living your life because of them. Live your life because of yourself. Glory to the name of the Lord. Riches. If you want it to keep coming, then manage what he has given to you well. Because of time. Number three. Wisdom. He said in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 19, the B part, it says wisdom is justified of our children. Wisdom. Uh -huh. He gave you wisdom at redemption. The reason many homes are destroyed right now is because they lack wisdom. Especially men. Men. And I will keep saying it until it gets into your head. <laughs> lack what? Wisdom. And the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom. I keep telling you this. The temperature of your home is determined by the mood of your wife. Just like that thermostat. If you want this place to be cool, you adjust it to cool. If you want peace in your home, make your wife happy. <laughs> Glory to the name of the Lord. If you create unnecessary tension in the house, even your children will feel it. They feel it. They sense it. Because it's temperature. Everybody in the house will feel it. <laughs> Are you with me? It is temperature. So the way you want the temperature, then it, that temperature is determined. The thermostat of your house is your wife. Glory to the name of the Lord. And I keep saying it. Both of you went out to work. And you came back. And you still want food. Right now. You want it now. The children are there. You expect her to bait the children. And you are staying saying. What, what are you still doing? You are late. You didn't do anything. You just met. Most men are selfish. You better think about it. And the Bible says, you are the one that needs wisdom to manage the house because you are the manager. If the house crashes on your head, if it, is, if it succeeds on your head, tell your neighbor, get wisdom. It is part of your inheritance. Women too, get wisdom. 
it is part of your inheritance. All this wonder, you're opening your mouth anyhow. Before your husband says one thing, you have said ten. That's why it's not helping you. Because you believe you know all. <laughs> you to tame your mouth. And be respectful. The Lord will give you understanding. Let's move on. Number four, strength. At redemption, he gave you strength. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. He said, he said, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. So any, anything that is not of God in your body. Whatsoever looks like pain is not from him. You didn't inherit that from him. In at redemption, what you have is strength. And that will be your portion from now. In the name of Jesus. So every, every form of deformity or lack of strength is being swallowed up right now. The next one is honor. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 7. It says, for your shame ye shall have double. And it's talking about double honor. It says, and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Honor. So where you have been reproached, that's not God. If you are continually witnessing reproaching and rejection, that is not God. That's not God's original plan. What you inherited from him is honor. Somebody's honor will come this time. And the next one is glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. It says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. From glory to glory. So what you should be experiencing in your life is from one level of glory to another. There shall be no setback again. In the name of Jesus. There shall be no more setbacks. Next one is blessing. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, Blessed be the Lord God, the Father and Father of our Lord Jesus, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, blessings, in other words, from glory to glory, from blessing to blessing. If where you are now was where you were last year, then something is wrong. You know, you had that testimony. He said they added the dollar 25 cents. It has never happened before in that place. But when a child, a redeemed child stepped in, light came. And because you are different, every, there are people who will benefit from what is happening to you. People have to benefit from what is going on around you. So what you carry around are blessings. And everyone associated with you must benefit from it. That will be somebody's testimony from now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not all. You are also entitled to all the good things of life. That is God's original plan. All the good, th the good things. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, according as his divine power. God given unto us some things. Most things. All things. All things. <laughs> Glory to the name of the Lord. All things. That's what you are entitled to. He has given you all things for good life. To live a good life. <laughs> what else has he given unto you? Peace, joy, and godliness. Peace, joy, and godliness. You see, every time you are walking or you are in your house or somewhere and your heart is panting daily, you are not walking in redemption. What he has given unto you are joy, peace, blessings, and all the fruits of the spirit. Galatians chapter 22 and verse 23. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. All these things are what we are entitled to. But if you don't know that you don't know, is not an excuse. Also, what have you entitled to? The fruit of the womb. Nobody is permitted to be barren. 
the fruit of the womb. And if you take note these days, I see a lot of protruding stomachs here. People are just giving birth anyhow. So you better tap into it if you are looking for that type of blessing. Why? Because that is what you are entitled to. No one is, he said, not even your cattle is permitted to be barren. And that will be somebody's portion here. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male nor female barren among you or among your cattle. God's redemption plan also covers your livestock. Says they will not be barren. That's how important you are. That his original plan for you covers your livestock. Is there any insurance company that covers you and covers your dog? Glory to the name of the Lord. And listen to this. What else are you entitled to? You are entitled to miracle marriages. Psalm 5 and verse 12. It says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Will thou compass him as with a shield? And you know when you have favor, then that's why God said in Proverbs 18, 22, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and has obtained favor of the Lord. So if you are walking in favor, that means you are entitled to a wife. <laughs> Glory to the Lord. The reason is, you are not seen now because, because your eyes are closed. Your, there, are, there, are, there are people that God wants to bless you with everywhere. But your eyes are both physical and spiritual. So tell your neighbor, shine your eyes. Open it very well. Before this year runs out, you will come in contact with that woman. Before this year runs out, you are coming in contact with that man. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That is part of God's original plan for you. But he said concerning that, that young child, he said he didn't know. And his father said unto him in Luke chapter 15 and verse 31, he said, son, all that I have is thine. All that I have is thine. No one here is permitted to sweat again. No one here is permitted to sweat again. Now, with all these perks and privileges, we can safely say then that the redeemed of the Lord is more than a conqueror. Because if you are blessed with all these spiritual blessings, then you are more than a conqueror. And if you are more than a conqueror, Ephesians chapter 6, 2 and verse 6 tells us, it says, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is where conquerors sit in heavenly places. They are in charge. They sit on top. And it says to us that John 3, 31, it says, He that cometh from above is above all. So, he that cometh from above is above all. So, possess the mentality of an overcomer. Stop begging people. You have begged too much. It's now time for you to live on top. You have begged too much. It is time for you to live on top. The reason they are rejecting some people from immigration is because when you are even going, you are scared. You don't know what you carry. You don't know who you are. You go down there and say, you better give me because I'll be a blessing to this nation. I am a blessing to this nation. Or you haven't seen it. You'll be the one asking them the questions. Glory to the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 20 to 21. The Bible speaking, it says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And that is why we are, you are also seated. He says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. So if you don't know it, chances are when it was stolen, you had no idea that you had it. You are more than a conqueror. If you are not walking in it, it's probably the fact that you didn't know who you are. But now that you know you are a conqueror, whatsoever you lost when you didn't know, now it's time to recover all. John chapter 10 and verse 10. 
It says the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So we know who stole it. And now it is time to recover it from him. He says, but I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Not only are you permitted to have life, I, have also, I also have a recovery plan for you. Such that when you have lost anything, I will recover it for you. That's what happened to the prodigal son. He remembered. Hey, this blessing that I have, this connection that I have with my father also includes recovery plan. Let me now tap into this part B of the recovery plan. And then he went back. Sir, I have messed up. But I know you have a recovery plan. Uh, now I want to step into that recovery plan. Many have lost time here. But your time will be redeemed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The, let's see the recovery plan. Joel chapter 2 verses 23 to 27. Joel 2, 23 to 27. Very quickly, be glad then ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he had given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to you to come down for you the rain. He says the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. He said, and the floors shall be full of wheat and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And then he said, and I will restore to you that's, this is my recovery plan now. I will restore to you the years that the locust had hidden, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. So it doesn't matter how long you have lost it. There is a recovery plan. Go back, go back, go back. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of of the law, your God. In other words, God is saying that for me to guarantee my food. What is this food? Praise. I have to give you your food. <laughs> Glory to the name of the Lord. He says, and ye shall eat in plenty. So when you have eaten, then you will remember to give me my own food. And the name, praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. 27, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people. Who are the people? Who are the people? Shall never be ashamed. Every shame that you have ever suffered comes to an end today. Whatsoever shame you have witnessed, whatsoever shame you have seen, it is coming to an end today. In the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is part of his recovery plan. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. He said, therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. The reason you don't know is because you don't know. But when you now know, then you know that you, everything that you have lost will be recovered. Your peace, your dignity. Glory to the Lord. Your family. As a matter of fact, David lost his whole family. 1 Samuel chapter 30. He lost everything. And then he went to God. Lord, what should I do? And God said, I have a recovery plan. Pursue after them. Not only will you, he said, and it came to pass. When David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag and bonded with fire. And he said, and had taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. They came to steal them. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. And David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept. This one is not weeping that was all it. Until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Camelite. He said, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. You see, he was the commander, but because of the robbery, he became a reproach. He was the one in charge, the commander, but because they suffered loss, he became a reproach. The reason many are looking down on you now is because of what you lost earlier. But now, 
it will recover all. Amen. You are recovering all. Amen. So that your dignity can be restored. Amen. Verse 8. Verse 8. And David inquired at the Lord and saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. For thou shalt not only overtake, you will re without fail recover all. Somebody's restoration is right now. But one thing that must be in place is what? Faith. You must believe it. No matter how many years you have lost it, you must believe it. I keep telling people this. You tell many people, ah, you say, it's because you don't know my husband. It's because you don't know my husband. I say, your husband will restore. Your, there will be a change. Ah, no, no, no. It's because you don't know. You don't believe it, so it won't happen. But when you believe it, then you will see the man. You are not the one to change any man. He says the hands of the Lord is in the hands of the, the heart. The heart of a man is in the hands of the Lord. And it is the Lord that will turn it. I have seen 29 year marriage being restored. My own family. So what is yours? Recovery. You, if it is your recovery plan, then I can say it won't work. But if it is God's recovery plan, all things can happen. He says all things. He did say some things. Did it say most things? All things, including your thing. Glory to the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All lost children will return home today. In the name of Jesus. And when I'm saying lost children, it doesn't mean that they have left the house. It just means that they have left your life. But they are returning now in the name of Jesus Christ. Because of God's recovery plan. There are destinies that have been molested. Your destiny, any destiny that have suffered any type of loss, there will be a recovery plan today. Amen. You are walking in God's original recovery plan today. Number two, you must see recovery. See it. See it. Until you see it, you won't even believe it. See that there will be change. See that whatsoever you have lost, picture it that it is coming back. And it is coming back different fold. Why? Because what you see is what you become. And when I'm saying see it, that means use God's word to, to bring them back. Use God's word. What is God's word saying about this matter? You had that testimony. I will go into the word every morning and I will see, Lord, what do you have for me? He said, I lost faith. I lost hope. I wanted to return. But God said, it's because that you are using your head. Now, check what I have for you in plan. John 1, 1 to 5. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It says, the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by, hello, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So, your husband was made by God. Your wife was made by God. Your children were made by God. If they were made by him, then that same word of God can change their lives around. Glory to the name of the Lord. It says there was not anything made that was made. It says in him was life and the life was the light of man. And then, and the light shineth in darkness and that darkness comprehended it not. And then he said, that darkness cannot comprehend it. That means whatsoever darkness that is hanging around you right now, light is coming into it. In the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. In the name of of the Lord Jesus the Christ. And lastly, because of time, how, what is God's recovery plan? Number three, love God. Love him. Not only him. Love him and love humanity. Love God and love his people. Because he's the one that will do it for you. And so if you don't love him, then he won't show up. You can't do it. You, there is no recovery plan by yourself. Even when people buy cars and they can't pay and they want to recover, the people who, sell, who sold the cars to them, we have to go and get some hefty men to go and recover the car. They, they won't go themselves. 
They will go with them, but they will hire people to go with them to go and bring it. So if you, are, if you want to walk in God's recovery plan, you can't do it by yourself. You need him. And then in Exodus 14, 14, he said, he said there, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And when he's going with you, look at what happens when he's going with you. Psalm 114 verses 1 to 8. Psalm 114 verses 1 to 8. When God is going with you, he said, when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, he said, Judah was the sanctuary and Israel is dominion. He said, the sea saw it and fled. Why? Because God's presence was with them. He says, Jordan was driven back. <laughs> he says, the mountains keep like rams and the little hills like lambs. He said, what LED, O thou sea, why are you running? See, that, that thou fleddest, thou Jordan, you rock. Why, what is driving you back? He said, ye mountains that ye skip like rams, and ye little lambs, what is going on? And then in verse 7, he said, tremble thou, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. When God's presence goes with you, then your recovery plan will be a walkover. But you have to love him. Enough of spending, of, of loving yourself. Enough of loving your job. Enough of loving everything else but God. There are people who only come to church on Thanksgiving. And you think you love him. No, let's tell ourselves the truth. Are you with me? When you say you love him, he will know... The person that you are telling you love, if I'm telling a human being that I love them, they may not know. Why? Because I'm just saying it. They are reading my lips. But love comes from the heart. And there's only one person that sees the heart, and that is God. So when you are saying you love him, he's saying to you, prove it. Prove it. You say you love me. You are not behaving like one that loves me. The only time I see you, is end of the month. The only time I am, I need the relationship with you. I want to talk to you. You can't say you love your wife now, and it's only when you want to eat that you remember you love. Is she's saying, "Come, I want to talk to you. Let's communicate. Let's speak. Let's talk." But you don't have time. Oh, you don't, no, 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 no. Everything you need is there. Um, take the check, take the check. Just write whatever you want. I don't need your money. I need your presence. I need your attention. That's what God is saying to us today. You see, you don't, you, some people will say, okay, you know what? God, take all the money in my account. He does not eat money. All he needs is your presence, your fellowship, your relationship with him. But many of us have abandoned him. And have taken the, the things that do not matter as number one. The Lord will give us understanding. Rise up on your feet this morning. Glory to the name of the Lord. Your recovery plan is working. Your recovery plan is working. There shall be recovery today. There shall be recovery today. In the name of Jesus. Before we pray this morning, all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed. Recovery plan starts with you knowing him. Recovery plan begins with you having a personal relationship with him. You don't know him, there is no recovery. There is nothing to recover. Or you did know him before, but you know you walked out on him and you want to return to him this morning. Why not? While all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, be sincere with yourself. Am I really walking with him? Or am I just on my own? But now I want to return. I want to know him. Lift up your right hand to heaven wherever you are. Let me pray with you. Glory to the Lord. All those hands, lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. Please, if you are lifting up your hand, come here very quickly. While the, Come here very quickly. Glory to the name of the Lord. While the church puts their hands together for the Lord. Inside the sanctuary and add the overflow. Don't be shy about it. Every one of us have done it one day or the other. This is God's presence. You are not doing it for any man. You are doing it for the kingdom. You are doing it for him. The first 
proof that you love him is that you will show up right now. That's the first sign that you love him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Put your hand, keep putting those hands together for the Lord. Is there still someone there? Someone is still there. You are. You are still deciding should I or should I not. That means you should. Recovery plan starts with him. Glory to the name of the Lord. Recovery plan starts with him. Hallelujah. Choir. I surrender. And I surrender, I surrender all, all to His my blessed Savior. I surrender, all. I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. Because he has a plan for you. Uh, see what you are doing right now as the biggest decision of your life. Because after now, you begin to walk in destiny and you begin to walk in favor. You begin to walk in God's original plan. And then all those things that we talked about, now you are entitled to them. Which means no more sickness, no more pain, no more failure, no more poverty. No more barrenness in any area in the glorious name of the Lord Jesus. However, because the truth, remember I said the truth comes from the heart. Put your hand on your heart and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I've come to you today just as I am. I know you died for me. And on the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. Thank you, Lord for accepting me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Now I'm born again. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, eternal master, in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for these precious souls. Your grace has brought them. Let the same grace preserve them. Father, as these ones have come into the kingdom, the benefits and perks of the kingdom becomes their portion Amen. in the name of Jesus and your name will be glorified in their lives. Thank you master Thank you, in Jesus marvelous name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah put those hands together for the Lord please take a look at this precious kingdom friends behind you they have one or two words to share with you and then you come back into the sanctuary and then we will all close the service together glory to the name of the Lord Hallelujah. Church, are you glad there is a harvest this morning? Put those hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. And now for us, before we close this morning, lift up your hands and just ask the Lord, Lord, what area do I need recovery in? In what area do I need recovery? You know the area that you need recovery in. Speak to him right now. Speak to him right now. Lord, in this area, I need recovery. Lord, the enemy stole this one. There shall be recovery. My family, I receive recovery this hour. On my job, I receive recovery. In my career, in my finance. Lord, recovery so that your name may be glorified. Recovery, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Oh, we give you all the glory. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name marvelous name we have prayed in jesus precious name we have prayed is somebody expectant now because within the next seven days there shall be news of recovery in the name of the lord jesus finances that have been destroyed 
there shall be recovery this time. Homes that have been scattered, there shall be recovery this time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your health that is in disarray, there shall be recovery this time. In the name of Jesus. God is practically turning you to a new man. God is turning you to a new woman. In the name of Jesus. Many of us have lost time. But God redeems time. He will make you overtake your peers. David said, should I, over, should I pursue? He said, pursue. Not only will you overtake, you will also recover all. You see, you have seen most of your friends in front. Why? Because you lost time. But after this service, you will not only overtake them, you will recover all that you have lost. In the name of Jesus. You will recover all that you have lost. In the name of Jesus. You will recover all that you have lost. You will overtake your peers that have gone ahead of you. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus precious name we pray. Put those hands together for the Lord. Comfortably take your seat. Hallelujah. Congratulate your neighbor to your right and to your left. Congratulate them. Glory to the Lord. Tell them I will be here to celebrate with you. When you are sharing your testimony, I will be here to celebrate with you. Tell them, if they didn't say it well, I'll, you will be here to celebrate with me. When I'm sharing my testimony. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Uh, before we close tonight, shall we listen very attentively to the following announcements? Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow morning. Time is 6 a.m. Ask your neighbor, where have you been? Glory to the Lord. Let's not neglect the presence of the Lord. Uh, one of the proofs that we love him is to appear in his presence. Praying for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's show up this is another week, starting tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. And by 7 a.m., we don't even know that it's 7 a.m. already. Because it goes so fast. The Lord bless you as you come. In Jesus' precious name. Wednesday, midweek service, 7 p.m. Let's remember, this is the last one for the month of September. And no one is permitted to miss anything here. Because on that day, we'll be giving glory to God for the last uh, midweek service of the month before we step into the 10th month. Also, Thursday, October the 1st, is our trumpet service. Glory to the Lord. And that means that we will be coming together to offer God thanks in advance for what he will do for us in the 10th month. Time will be 6 a.m. All of us are expected to be here and come and give him praise for what he will do for you in the month of October. Sunday is our covenant day of marital breakthroughs. Is somebody clapping? Is somebody excited? Covenant day of marital breakthroughs. I will tell every family here to come expectant. Because something is about to happen. Listen to me. If you can humble yourself as much as you can between now and Sunday. And just do everything that your husband wants to bring him. Is somebody with me? Tell them, please, my husband, we are doing something in church this Sunday. Don't watch film, don't watch film for football today. Let's record it. We'll come back and watch it. Glory to the Lord. And bring them to hear what you hear. Because I believe that in this season, homes will be restored. Amen. Families will be restored in the glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or even your wife. Your wife does not follow you to church. You better tell them. My wife. Okay, I've never asked you for anything but today. This one is a decree. We are going to church together next week Sunday. Are you with me? And then God will also meet them at the very point of their needs. In the name of Jesus. And also, very shortly, we will be celebrating God's servant for his 61st birthday. Hallelujah. I thought you would be excited about that. We'll be celebrating him for his 61st birthday. Um, and also, before, let's remember that welfare is available today for anyone that needs anything. 
at the youth ch chapel there, but please let's just file in in um, a straight line whatsoever you see there that you need. Pick it. Don't be shy. Don't be shy about it because you are not in need. It's just a face in your life right now which is coming to pass. Uh, because very shortly you are also bringing trailer loads of things to the church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in one minute before we welcome our new comrades and first timers, let's just thank God for God's servant. His 61st birthday, let's praise God for him. Let us dance. Let's offer God praise for his 61st birthday today. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. Why? Lord is good. Come and see the Lord is good. There is nothing he cannot do. Come and see the Lord is good.
Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Uh, you are, we are celebrating. Uh, has this man ever been a blessing to anyone? Glory to the name of the Lord. And that's why we are celebrating the God in his life. And as you celebrate with those who celebrate, then God will make what happens in their lives to happen in yours. Every grace upon his life rests upon you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Put those hands together for the Lord. Comfortably take your seat. As we close the service right now, we cannot close though until we welcome those who are worshipping with us on a Sunday morning like this for the very first time. Glory to the name of the Lord. Please, if you are worshiping with us on a Sunday morning like this for the very first time, pack all your bags and baggages because we are closing from here. And please make your way to the podium. Let's give you a royal welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are worshiping with us for the very first time, please bring all your bags and baggages, everything you have come oh, to church with. So take me by the hand Together we will work Until he comes There's no fall that can defeat us When we walk in side by side As long as there is love We will stand Hallelujah Glory to the name of the Lord well, this is Winners Chapel International. They are still coming. Put your hands together for the Lord for them. Hallelujah. This is Winners Chapel International, Minnesota, and ham of Winners Chapel International worldwide. And our headquarters is in Canaan land, Ota, Nigeria, under the able leadership of Bishop David Oedipo that you just saw his picture. Today is 61. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, we meet here like this, Sundays like this, between the hours of 9 and 11 a.m., and it's Jesus' time here, except we are celebrating like this. Glory to the Lord. And also Wednesdays we meet between the hours of 7 and 8.30 p.m. Jesus' time. Uh, but this Thursday, we also meet here every morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Um, to pray. And on Thursday is our covenant trumpet day when we'll be going into the month with thanksgiving. We'll be just praising God on that day. It's also 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Well, we tell people this. If you come here for three months and you consistently attend all these programs, Sunday, Wednesday, home cell, and nothing happens in your life in three months, that means this is not your place. You can find another place. But we know that God's word is here. And if God's word is here, then God is here and is able to meet all of your needs. So if you come consistently, then just know that within three months, something strange will happen for, to you. Something goodly strange, if there's any English like that. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we love you. We welcome you. And we still have more gifts for you and to talk to you. Please take a look at this precious sister right behind you, this kingdom friend. Uh, they have a word to share with you. Please make your way with them. I will be seeing you in two minutes. Hallelujah. Church, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. I will be coming to pray with you in a while. Glory to the name of the Lord. Put those hands together for the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet with me this morning and just give him praise and thanks again. Magnify and exalt his name for giving us grace even again this morning. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We exalt and magnify the Lord in Jesus' precious name we pray. Let's not forget Operation Two Souls. In this season, everyone is expected to bring two souls before October 25. We have materials for you to invite people at the um, protocol stand there. Please, as you are leaving, pick up some of those materials. As you are picking up some food items, Pick up some of those materials and give to people outside. Are you with me this morning? Uh -huh. Because when you bring them in, then God will meet them here. And when he meets them here, he plants them here. 
and they also begin to bear fruits. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this service is ready at the protocol stand. The CDs are already there. If you are interested, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Go in peace this week. Return tomorrow morning with a testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The original recovery plan for God for your life will not be futile this time. It will work in your hands in the name of Jesus. By Wednesday, you are sharing your testimony. You are coming to Wednesday service with your testimony. In the name of Jesus. This week, there shall be no evil report. Every form of accident is thereby swallowed up in the name of Jesus. No evil man invades your children's school. They will not invade your workplaces. You will not enter any plane with them. In the name of Jesus. The malls you go to are covered in the blood of Jesus. Your cars are covered in the blood of Jesus. Practically no evil report concerning you. Every time your phone rings this week, it will be good news. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Shall we share the goodness together? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives... And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Peace. God bless you. Heaven on earth. And wonders without end. Well, the service has not closed. We have officially closed it, but we are still praising God for the things that he has done. Glory to the Lord. Happy birthday to the Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Hallelujah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Papa. Happy birthday to you. Praise the name of Jesus. Please, if you, in case you you came in late for the service and you have not dropped your offering, please make your way to the front. The offering basket will be here. So you can partake of the fullness.